Okay, let's keep going. So chemical notation. When we write a chemical molecule, we can put them in this way. That's the structure. Or we can write the each atom. O, H, H. So that's H2O, that's water. And that line represents the covalent bound. Or we can write abbreviation. Like H2O, that's water. And in your body, you want to produce energy. The process is called metabolism. And that's the chemical reaction happening in your body. And this chemical interaction, basically, they just break the bound and reform the bound. And those molecules that participate in the chemical reaction, we call them reactant. And they produce products. And in that process, they just break those chemical bounds between the atoms. There are three different types of reaction, decomposition, synthesis, and exchange. Let's look at each one of them. Decomposition definition is you have a big molecule, you break this bound, you become smaller molecules, so release the covalent bound. A good example, hydrolysis. This happens a lot in your body in the last unit when we talk about the digestive system, and you you break those food into small molecules, and that's hydrolysis. Why called hydrolysis? Because when you break this molecule, they used to combine together. Once you break them, and these two guys, they lose a little bit, they, they lose a, a, a molecule need to bind with them. So they will take water. They will they cut water, become H and OH. They will give this guy an H, give this guy OH. So they break the water, and in order to break this molecule. So that process is called hydrolysis. It happens a lot in food digestion. The synthesis is the update. You take two small molecules, you combine them together, and that's the synthesis. This happens after you eat the food through the chemical digestion. You take those molecules, start to build up your body molecule. And that synthesis response. You also call the hydration synthesis because once you want to combine them together, you need to take the one molecule, the H away, the other molecule, the OH, and now they can glue together. And when they, these lose H and OH together, they lose, become water. So this process is called dehydration synthesis, also called anabolism. The exchange, that's the third chemical response. And that's when they break the bound, they switch, and that's exchange. In some of the chemical process, it's reversible. It means they can go from the left to the right, and some of them will go back, and they'll reach the balance state. It's called the equilibrium. Like you have 10 uh, A, 10 B, and it eventually they only form 5 A, B, and you still have 5 A, 5 B left, and that's equilibrium. I'll leave the keynote to you. In your body, you use the enzyme to help you for the chemical process, and in Unit 5, when we talk about the digestive system, and you will learn we have a lot of digestive enzymes. So you have the reactant, you have the product. And to make this chemical process happen, you need to overcome the energy gap. You need to give them energy. That's why in a chemical lab, you usually you give them fire, you, you give them heat to make this process to happen. In your body, you could not create a fire, they're going to burn the hole. So what happens is we use the enzyme. Enzyme's job is not to change the reactant, the, the product. They just lower the energy required. So what happens is after enzyme, the energy required is so low. So this can happen in your body temperature. And this enzyme's function, you lower the energy required. Still the same reactant, still the same product. They just lower the energy required for the chemical process to happen. And without the enzymes, you found this is difficult to happen. Like we do have people that are short of the enzyme to digest uh, lactose, so they could not drink milk. So you need the enzyme for the chemical process to happen. 
and those uh, elements they produce nutrients we call the nutrients produce uh, energy we call the nutrients and that's the definition okay we we'll look at the organic inorganic the definition of organic and inorganic is inorganic molecule usually they're smaller they they either miss the carbon or hydrogen organic they are usually bigger molecule they need to have carbon and hydrogen usually they are big so our next topic we will talk about those uh, biomolecules they are all organic molecules and today let's talk about the inorganic one so they are usually smaller they miss either hydrogen or miss carbon like the gas molecule CO2 uh, that's the molecule we breathe out and oxygen that's the gas molecule we need and they are inorganic molecule water very important inorganic molecule is a part of solvents and it has high heat capacity because of the hydrogen bound you need to turn the water into vapor you have to break the oxygen bound and they will take a lot of heat that's why the water have high heat capacity and in your body 60 percent of your body weight water so we can take a lot of heat and water is a very good solvent and the reason is you put salt into water salt love to become the ions sodium ion chloride ion and sodium ion has positive charge it turned out water has a partially negative head and partially positive uh, tail and we call them polar molecule so turn out you can use the head part to cover the sodium so sodium is happy and the chloride has negative charge it like to be surrounded with positive charge you just turn the water molecule away and the hydrogen pound hydrogen part has partially positive so you can use the tail part to cover the chloride so both sodium chlorides are very happy in water so the water is a very good solvent dissolve a lot of salt and other molecules and one important inorganic molecule is acid and base so acid anything can release hydrogen H plus we call them acid like hydrochloric acid very strong acid it's gonna release a lot of H plus this make the solution acidic so when you drink uh, lemon juice uh, this very acidic the same because they have a lot of H plus the base is anything that release OH or anything they can take the hydrogen away like when you add hydrochloric acid into the base a base solution can take the H plus away so it's not that acidic anymore so the base is they are able to remove hydrogen like an AOH uh, the OH part can bind with the H plus become H2O so they can remove the H plus that's the base and we want to know how acidic a solution is and we need to create the scale the scale is called the pH scale so it's a, a way to measure uh, the hydrogen ions concentration and the scale come from 0 to 14 if the scale is 7 that's neutral and the smaller the number more acidic so uh, if the pH equals to 1 super super acidic and pH equal to 6 a little bit acidic and if the number is bigger than 7 we call the basic solution like the oven cleaner that's a very basic solution and both two acidic two basic solution can uh, can harm your skin so you need to use a wear gloves when you clean your oven that's the very basic solution or when you touch hydrochloric acid that's the acidic solution and that's the pH scale come from a very acidic to very basic and if it's seven that's neutral so the acidic one like stomach acid very acidic vinegar is around here and the basic ones okay the bleach that's a basic one ammonia very basic and oven cleaner super basic then let's look at the blood 
blood is not neutral your blood pH is 7.4 so your blood is actually a little bit basic and if you like uh, soda well this tell you all the soda they are very acidic because they they push CO2 into water so it's carbonic acid that's why the soda is acidic they also have a lot of sugar inside and to maintain your body pH is very important so in your body you have buffer and buffer is the solution is able to maintain your body pH like your blood is a buffer so your blood pH is well maintained is 7.4 is a very small wiggle room between 7.35 to 7.45 we consider is is normal so a buffer can maintain the pH it can either release the hydrogen so if you you add a lot of OH they can release hydrogen to neutralize it or absorb hydrogen so you, you add a hydrochloric acid into the solution they can take the hydrogen away so either way no matter you add acid you add basic the buffer are able to take the H plus take the OH away to be able to maintain the pH so buffer is function is to maintain pH and when you combine the acid and base together they will become salt so salt uh, are those like sodium chloride is a salt and when you put salt into water they will dissociate become the ions positive charge ion negative charge ions and the big word to say the ion we call the electrolytes in your body electrolytes are important they maintain important physiological function we'll talk about that in the neuron part in unit 3 okay that's it